snake? Hush. That's right. It's her. What about the bomb? We were able to remove the explosives. Both of them. Bomb! No, no, no. No, it's okay. There's another in my... It's all right. We got it out. There's another in my... The guided tour will be wrapped up by the time you get home. Make me proud. By the time they leave, I'll have the IAEA praising us as the poster boys for world peace. Out. Something's not right. Check her again. Somehow she managed to survive. Anyway, the shock triggered some kind of amnesia. Snake? Where is Professor Galvez? You mean? Yeah. She still thinks it's 1974. She's got no memory of anything before that either. Cypher, the KGB, nothing. It looks to be a kind of dissociative disorder. Dissociative amnesia, where memories are blocked out to protect the mind, and dissociative identity disorder, the whole personality changes. What we're seeing seems to be a combination of the two. She truly believes she's nothing more than a student living in 1974. Peace Day was a lot of fun. I hope we can do it again. <sighs> she doesn't respond to anything that conflicts with her internal timeline. Doctor's pretty sure she's not faking it. If she had her memory, just think what she could tell us about Cypher. The photo is from that guy you brought back the other day. From the old crew. I thought it might jog her memory, but no luck. Anything else you can show her? Something to show me, Snake? I give up. She's all yours. Show me, Snake? This photo. It is from the other day, right? I like it a lot. I look kind of silly, but it's got a peaceful feel to it. Peace Day was a lot of fun. Everyone cheered at the end, even though I missed a few high notes. We should have more events like that, Snake. I'm sorry, Snake. My head hurts. 
Could you let me rest? Snake? She's been acting differently lately. Before, she'd respond to conversation. Just as long as it didn't conflict with her timeline. But now, nothing gets a reaction from her. What happened? No idea. Well, Miller did go and tell her that Skullface is dead. If anyone should want revenge against him, it would be her. It's not exactly like an angel of peace to cheer for someone's death, now is it? There, take a look at this too. See it right there. The wound is open. Yeah. It was all closed up, and then it went back to this. But why? The medic has no idea how it happened. He figures it must have been self-inflicted.
going to be a kind of festival held on Mother Base. They are calling it Peace Day. Snake and his men may be without a nation, but they are still an army. And that means sometimes they have to fight the bad guys. Of course, they should not fight at all. It is obvious to me that any problem can be solved with reasonable discussion. Maybe Snake and the others think so too, because the idea is to set aside war for one day a year and relax in peace. I do not know how it came about, but apparently Snake and Miller got the idea while they were talking, and everyone on Mother Base went along with it. To think that deep down they all share a love of peace, that makes me happy. But never mind that. Somehow I have ended up singing on stage. Miller was all, come on, both our names mean peace. It will be great. Why does that mean we have to be in a band? Then he roped Professor Galvez in too, saying, hey, Galvez comes from peace too. We are the perfect act. I am not sure Miller really understands the origins of the name Galvez. But then again, you always have to take Miller's talk with a grain of salt. What I cannot believe is, he went and told everyone we'd be performing together without even asking my opinion. Now everyone thinks it has all been decided. I like to sing, but I have never had to perform in front of a crowd. I do not think I'm up to this. But... Everyone seems to be looking forward to it. I guess I would hate to let them down. And anything is better than letting Miller sing. <laughs> oh, that was mean. Miller said he was going to write a song for us. I wonder what it will be like. It is funny. The more nervous I get, the more I find myself looking forward to it. base is busy getting ready for peace day. Miller has finished writing his song, so I went with Professor Galvez to listen to it. Miller was really into it, humming away as he played the song on his acoustic guitar. But the song melody did not match up with the guitar chords at all, and it sounded more like a mess than music. Miller's very enthusiastic, but I think he's tone deaf. I guess the guitar backing sounded good at least. But as I was wondering how to break it to Miller, Professor Galvez took out an odd instrument. It was just two antennas sticking out of a box, more like a radio than a musical instrument. He said it was invented by the Soviets, but why would Professor Galvez own a Soviet Russian instrument? I asked him, and he told me music has no borders. Well, I cannot argue with that. Good music is something people of any nation can appreciate. Why not abandon war and just make music together? But anyway, the professor offered to try playing the melody on his instrument in time with Miller's guitar. It was like something from another world. But somehow, it fit Miller's guitar backing really well. It even gave the song a charming, down-home kind of feeling. Miller was overjoyed. That is it! That is my melody right there, he said. It sounded totally different from when he sang it. But hearing the professor's version, I thought I could probably sing it. Then Miller hit me with the next bombshell. Buzz, you write the lyrics. I did not know whether to scream or to run out of the room. There was only one week left until peace day. So, as if putting me on stage to sing was not enough, Miller even expected me to write the lyrics. He even said he had thought of the title already. Love Deterrence. As if he had done the hard part. Deterrence? Love? Deterrence? Deterrence is, it is when nuclear weapons prevent war, right? I do not see how love fits in. But it was too late to complain, so I just sat and listened to the tape of Miller's backing guitar and the professor's melody over and over again. I guess the melody is more Professor Galvez's creation than Miller's, but on the whole, I think it is actually a good song. First, it goes for your heart with a sorrowful opening, but then you feel revitalized as the song goes on. Miller grew up in post-war Japan. Maybe that is why the song has that kind of balance. 
long ago, I heard some Japanese music called Enka, I think. It sounded this way. But I wonder why it has to sound sad in the first place. Mueller called it love deterrence. Doesn't that mean he had a love song in mind? All I see of Mueller and women is the way he fooled around with a lot of them at once. But maybe he has had his heart broken too. And what about me? I found myself thinking about Chico and Snake as well. I know Chico has a crush on me. So naturally he should come to mine. But why Snake? He saved me. And I feel indebted to him. But I thought that was all he meant to me. Why does my heart flutter when I think of him? It is embarrassing to be unable to control this emotion. There has to be a way to suppress it. To forget it. But maybe that is what love deterrence is? With that thought in mind, I went to my desk and began to write and write. Just three days left until peace day. I finally had a decent draft of the lyrics, so I showed them to Professor Galvez first. He liked them. He said I had done a superb job capturing the sense of a young girl's troubled heart. There were one or two lines I thought needed brushing up, so although he said lyrics aren't my specialty at first, he gave me some advice. Everything he said made perfect sense. When I tried putting in his changes, they made the song feel deeper, more sincere. That is the professor for you. He always has the answer. With the lyrics finished, I was ready to show Miller. He does not often take things seriously, but all of a sudden, he was saying, Paz, you have the soul of an Enka songwriter. And I did not even listen to Enka all that much. Maybe I am pretty talented after all. But still, it took so much time to write the lyrics that there is hardly any time left to rehearse before peace day. The three of us rushed into the makeshift practice studio on Mother Base to see how we sounded together. Miller strummed away with a big smile on his face. I sang the main melody, and Professor Galvez improvised a backup melody. I know the professor is smart, but is there anything he cannot do? And Miller's guitar playing sounded a lot better now that he stopped singing. But I can hardly criticize his voice. I thought I had learned the song well enough listening to the tape as I wrote the lyrics, but I had trouble with the pitch and kept missing the rhythm. I have to practice, but there is almost no time left. It is just three days until peace day. Wait, I thought there were three days left before. I went and checked today's date with Miller and the professor. The date has not changed. It is the same day. Something is strange. Am I reliving the same day? Peace day never came. Every morning I wake up expecting it to come. But it is always three days away. That cannot be it. I have not woken up at all. It is just a dream. It is all a dream. I am in it. And you are in it too. I am the dreamer. But you are having my dream. Do you get it now? You do. Don't you? Peace day. Never. Came. With three days left, I followed my orders from Cypher and launched the operation. I hijacked Zeke. I fought Snake. I lost and was thrown into the ocean. I survived, but I was captured by Cypher. How happy I would have been if they had let me die then and there. Our wishes do not come true. We just cling on to our dreams. Our phantoms. Mine. And yours. But I think this one is coming to an end. After all, you have figured it out now. You can kill Skullface, murder Huey, slaughter Zero, burn the whole world down. But he still won't bring me back. Me, or any of the dead. And that was our business. 
war. We bought our daily bread with money paid to us for killing. Maybe us getting killed was just balancing the scales. You know, Mother Base was never the heaven we wanted it to be. But I was still happy to have lived with everyone there. It was such a short time. Such a hypocritical peace. But while I was on Mother Base, I was happy. So... I hope I am not the only one who looks back on those days with happiness. There is more to remember than hatred and rage. But of course, this is you thinking that I should think that. It is no mystery now. I am just a phantom. A fragment of the mind you have lost. The real me died a long time ago. But even so, more so, I can tell what you are really feeling. The real emotion that is locked away at the bottom of your heart. Let it fly out. Let it guide you. Live. I think it is my job to tell you that. That is why I exist. So this tape is the last one. Once you are done listening to it, I am one phantom limb that will be gone for good. My flesh, my bones, joining the silt on the ocean floor. But do not forget, as long as you remember me, I will always live within you. Not a phantom limb or a phantom anything, as part of your heart. I will always be your angel of peace. So, I know exactly how to finish. <laughs>